The meeting of the Escambia County Board of Adjustment for Jan January uh, 12, 2023 is hereby called to order. With five members present, we have a quorum. Will clerks please swear in members of staff? Staff, raise your right hands. Quorum. Yes. We solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. I do. Members of the board, copies of staff's resumes have previously been provided and remain on file for reference. The board has previously recognized staff as expert witnesses. Does anyone have any questions regarding their qualifications and abilities to offer expert testimony? Seeing none. The BOA meeting package for January 12, 23, with the Development Services staff's findings of fact has previously been provided to the board members. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept the BOA meeting package into evidence. We have a motion. I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion, we have a second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. Did the publication meet all the requirements? Yes, sir. Reading of the legal advertisement is not required at this time. The waiving of the uh, reading of it is uh, subject to a motion. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. Members of the board, have you reviewed the resume and the transcript for the board of adjustment meeting held on December 21st, 22? Chairman, I have left off those minutes because this is a special, min uh, special case. We will put those minutes on next week's agenda. All right. Board members, the reading of those minutes is hereby waived. Is everyone in agreement? Is there any dis disagreement? Seeing none. Purpose of the Board of Adjustment, sir. The Board of Adjustment hears administrative appeals, variances, and judicial needs requests. These hearings are quasi quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in a court of law, however, less formal. All public testimony will be taken under oath, and anyone testifying before the BOA may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits that the BOA considers are entered into evidence and made part of the record. The giving of opinion testimony will be limited to experts and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence in the record. After hearing the testimony and arguments for and against the proposed action and before making its decision, the BOA will consider relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable law. Because decisions of the BOA relating to variances, conditional uses, and extensions of development orders or site plan approval are final unless over overturned by a court of competent jurisdiction, the county may issue development orders and permits for properties in accordance with the decisions of the BOA. However, if an applicant requests the issuance of such an order or permit, and such an order or permit is issued, the applicant and not the county shall bear any risk that 
such decision may be set aside. The development order or permit may be revoked, or the development may be otherwise enjoined by the reviewing court. An applicant for relief from a decision of the DOA for said action or any aggrieved party, as defined by state law, may seek review of such decision by filing an appropriate pleading in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the DOA decision. The date of the DOA decision shall be the date the DOA voted at the conclusion of the hearing. Whenever the DOA denies an application, no new application for an identical action on the same parcel shall be accepted for consideration within a period of 180 days of the DOA decision. Any person aggrieved by a decision of the DOA relating to an appeal of an administrative decision may, within 15 days thereafter, apply to the circuit court for review. Each individual who wishes to address the board regarding a particular issue must complete a blue request to speak form and submit it to the clerk of the board. These forms are located at the table at the back of the commission chambers. You will not be allowed to speak until we receive one of these completed requests to speak forms. You must have the completed forms for the public record. All written are oral communication outside of this hearing with members of the BOA regarding the matter under review may be and are considered ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided in Board of County Commission Resolution 96-13 before a decision by the board or any administrative appeal, variance, or conditional use request. The chair will ask as each case is heard that the board member who has been involved in any ex parte communication regarding the respective issue to please identify themselves and describe the communications. First case is appeal 2023-01-2414 North Pace Boulevard. Board members, has there been any ex parte communication regarding this case? Seeing none, does anyone have knowledge or information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Seeing none, does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none, would the individuals who are party to this item please come to the podium and identify yourself. Please state your name and address for the record and be sworn in by the clerk. Good morning, my name is Daniel Demeter. I'm the business owner at 2414 North Pace Boulevard, Pensacola. Yes. This being an appeal, we, we usually let the plaintiff speak first, but in this case, since it's an appeal, would you like to let the uh, staff uh, yeah. give their rationale and then you, you address it at that point? Yes, that's fine. Okay, it, it, it's okay for you to have a seat. Would staff make a presentation at this time? Certainly. Hi, I'm Christy Hankins. I'm, I represent the, the county on this matter. Um, with Kristen as your, um, as your advisor, someone from our office had to come in and fill in to handle this. The, um, I do know that they want to make a presentation. They have some documentation that we'd like to submit as evidence at this time. If I could give a copy to Mr. Demeter. Demeter. 
Demeter, I apologize, and I'll try to get it right. Um, if we could give a copy to him and present a copy uh, of the documents that will be part of the presentation that's presented by the staff. Thank you. And, and who has it? Do we need I to have it. Oh, okay. Do we need to make a motion to accept this documentation? Uh, please. Yes. Can you give us an idea sure. of what it is that? On behalf of the county, this is Caleb McCarty, mm -hmm. um, certified planner, American Institute of Certified Planners. Um, the documents that you're receiving is the alcohol site inspection policy um, that we use internally for staff. Also is the history of the site inspections that have been conducted um, on behalf of the applicant and the request, and also a copy as provided by the conflicting use that was found of the child care facility. So we provided copies of those documents in an attempt to try to explain a little bit more of the history associated. Right. The, those are the ones that have been conducted on the site on the request. So the most recent one is, is inclusive in there. Yeah. Jennifer, did you want to make a motion regarding the acceptance? Is the applicant okay with this document? I'll make a motion to accept these documents. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Those, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Passage uh, unanimously. Can you give us a minute to review these? Sure. And I do want to remind the board members when you, He's when you speak, to please speak in the mic. He's please speak that. in the mic. Hit the mic. It's very, very critical that you speak. In the Are you not hearing the mic. us? Are you hearing us? Yes. I, yes. Yes. But it hasn't. Some of y'all been speaking without it. That's oh, why. But please okay. speak in the mic. From the All right. Thank you. Call in the room. All right. A second for the board to review these documents. Uh, Are we going to have the uh, site on I can, I can camera the maps. on TV? You know, it might, you, it might be quicker if you go ahead and make your uh, presentation and, and uh, refer to these as needed. Certainly. So here, um, our first case, obviously, as stated, um, applicant is appealing an alcohol spe site inspection application um, result that was issued on November 23rd, 2022. First slide on the screen here is the location at 2414 North Pace Boulevard. Here we have our 500 foot radius zoning map. The zoning is heavy commercial light industrial. Our future land use designation for the property is mixed use urban. Um, this site is in a community redevelopment area known as Inglewood. And this is an aerial map showing the property. This is our public hearing sign that was posted on the property. This is looking southeast towards the subject property. This is looking northeast towards the subject property. Looking south along Pace Boulevard. And that concludes our photos for this case.
If you'd like, I can provide the brief summary um, as staff has compiled. Yes, please. In brief, um, the requested appeal again is appealing an alcohol site inspection application result issued for 11-23-2022. Um, there's some relevant authority concerning um, the submission and the appeal authority. If we need to, we can go into that, but I would just skip to the background information number four and would say, on November 23rd, 2022, staff conducted an alcohol site inspection as requested by the applicant and concluded there was a conflicting use of child care facility slash church within the 1,000 foot measurement. The application was therefore denied and the applicant was informed that a conditional use review from the Board of Adjustment would be needed. On November 29, 2022, the applicant filed an administrative appeal application meeting the Land Development Code, LDC, 15 day submittal requirement. A special BOA meeting was scheduled for January 12th today, 2023, in accordance with the LDC provision that a quasi-judicial public hearing for the appeal shall be concluded to concur within 30 business days after receipt of complete application. That concludes staff's presentation at this time. Thank you very much. Board members, before we refer to the applicant, uh, are there any questions of uh, staff? Mr. Chairman, I was had uh, one on the alcohol site inspection application. When you turn over and we look at these maps, um, how about walking us through exactly, I presume there is a route that was followed that's shown, is that right, on one of these maps? Yes, sir. Um, our land development code and our alcohol regulations um, are found in section 4-7.5 and particularly E um, of that section says that um, churches, child care facilities, the measurement is taken from door to door um, along the ordinary pedestrian route. So as we measure, we go from the applicant's front door coming off of 2414 North Pace. We can pull up a photo of that. And then we come directly out to the sidewalk. That's a long pace. We head south and we go to, we have found that there is a child care facility at the corner of Pace and Bobie. And we have found it to be a distance less than 1,000 feet. Is there a sidewalk a long pace for, uh, completely from the building that uh, of the applicant to the child care center? Yes, sir. Well, there, there was some testimony about, or there was some evidence introduced about cutting through parking lots and things like that. All I can say, the applicants can speak to that. Um, I can't interpret any type of statute that's provided. I would defer to the applicant and the information that they provide. Well, I guess my point right now is, is that there is more or less a straight path that leads from one building to another. Is that what you're, is that what that map purports to show? That would be our understanding of the ordinary pedestrian route as the code okay. reads. It's not as the, as the bird flies um, that has been discussed in the past with the Board of County Commissioners. Um, that's why we wanted to provide you with our policy and procedures that we can use eternally. Um, there's a diagram and it's essentially from door to door. That's how the code reads and that's how we take the measurements. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. So a pedestrian would be using the sidewalk the whole way from door to door, is that correct? I would assume. There, along Bobby, um, the applicant can attest to this as well. There's not necessarily a sidewalk 
that connects to the rear of that building. Now, you'll find in, that you have two site inspections in front of you, one that was done in March and an associated map. There's two maps associated with that. The first one, which would be otherwise page two, shows from door to door of being 755 feet. That is taking to a door of the building of the child care facility that lies along Pace Boulevard. We I'm sorry, you, I did, could you say that again? I didn't understand. Yes, yeah, so there's two maps that are associated with the first site inspection that was done. Perhaps you could tell them what page you're on. Yeah, page two. Okay. You'll see that there is a distance between door to door that staff conducted of 755 feet. There's a couple different doors on the child care facility, okay? The first measurement was taken to the one that is fronting on Long Pace Boulevard, and staff found that it was 755 feet. Obviously, when the applicant received the results of that, um, it tested the results um, and stated that the actual entrance of this child care facility that would be used in those type of things is located on the rear. Staff obliged, we try to make things work, and we redid the measurement. The associated map on page three shows after that modification and obliging to the applicant going to the rear of the building was found to be 900 feet still less than the thousand feet okay yeah so that that's I just wanted to make sure and, and again to even complicate it a little more for you um, after the applicant withdrew his case for the conditional use that um, we had to get now we're six months removed we had to get another site inspection submit it on the record so the applicant can actually appeal it at that time, the applicant, along with the submittal of a new site inspection, which you will find on page 13, this is the most recent one, this is the one being appealed, that there was a note that was provided by the applicant that says, please use other door. So now there's a third door that we took a measurement from. And staff did the measurement and it was found to be 915 feet. I'm so, sorry, could you say that again? Yes, please? sir. 900 and what? 15 feet. All yes, right. sir. 915 feet. So is that the one we're going with right now? I believe that's the one that would essentially be appealed right now. Yes. Okay. We wanted to provide these documents to show the history that was related to here. Um, so and this is coming to us, and I'm looking at your policy and procedure sheet. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> the, the second or third page, I guess. This is coming to us because this is a, they're wanting a, A different uh, um, alcohol license at two Correct. COP or something. Yes. Yeah, so the, the gist of that is that there are various federal state laws about alcohol uses and those type of things. In conjunction with on-premise consumption, um, the applicant has to go through the Department of Public and Business Relations (DPBR) um, to attempt to get a anything from just selling beer and wine like your gas stations would have. I know the board's familiar with some of this stuff before. Or actually on-premise consumption or liquor sales. It's a type of license. Our code, our local land development code, says that anything other than a 2APS, which this application is for a 2COP, so it's not a 2APS. Anything other than a 2APS requires the site inspection and the me measurement verification. That triggers it for us. 
Um, so once that request has gone through, then we conduct the alcohol site inspection based upon these policies and procedures. And if the results come back that there's no conflicting use, um, we would essentially sign off on the state zoning um, review portion of their application. Um, they have to get various business, you know, the property appraisers and different county entities here locally for their state license to sign off. We're one of them for the zoning review. Um, they would continue and attempt to get that license for a 2COP. Once we find the conflicting use, such as this situation, then our code triggers it into a conditional use process. So that's where we found ourselves now. Um, okay, so they can they can sell beer and wine right now. Um, yeah, yes. For, for uh, on premise consumption. Correct, and in the middle of the March site inspection, and then as we are now, the most recent site inspection, there was a two APS license that was applied for, for, you know, not on premise consumption, beer and wine sales for off premise um, that we approved and there's no trigger for that. So the, the applicant has attained that. So. May I clarify? Was your question whether or not they can sell it for consumption on property right now? Yes. That type of state license, no. Mm -mm. Two so, APS is a, it's essentially like your CVS or your Walgreens, where mm -hmm. it's beer and wine only, no hard liquors, no on premise. You would go in, buy your beer or wine only, and take it home to be consumed. Okay. The next steps in those licenses, you deal with <coughs> hotels and golf courses, it's different types. The two, a, two COP is, um, an applicant may be able to answer this better, is essentially on premise for, you know, different types of alcohol where someone would come in, sit down, drink, or whatnot, so. Evan, do you have a question? I was, no, go ahead, please. Um, I was wondering if you could give me kind of a brief summary of, of what all this is. Um, I know it deals with the daycare. It looks like um, some type of inspection checklist. Yes, at the time that the first alcohol site inspection was done back in March, um, the applicant attested that this wasn't an actual child care facility. Um, it was labeled on the building, those type of things. So we simply called the child care facility and they quickly provided this with their actual license that would be valid until February 1st, 2023. And this, um, I, I know, I know a little bit about, um, childcare. When I had a kid, I looked into, um, you know, the state and how they, uh, managed and, and looked at different child cares. Um, this was many moons ago. And I know that, um, you know, the, the health department will come in and, and take a look at things and, and, and so forth and so on. And if there's any issues, um, they, they report them and so forth. This report here, this religious exempt facility information, uh, looks like it's dated 2019. I can't um, verify your, your expertise. You know, I would defer to someone else, but this was what was provided to us. Okay. Um, that just seems. Um, sure. Sure. Pretty, yeah. If I may, Go if ahead. I may, um, if you look on the front on the exemption certificate, it explains how the law works. Once it becomes a uh, religious exemption, that organizations such as the FCCPSA are authorized to go forward and handle these. Uh, these accreditations instead of DCF continuing to be involved. Okay. And, and just re if you read through that, you'll see that they're in compliance with the requirements per Florida statutes, and it meets the minimum requirements of the local governing body as to health, sanitation, and safety, and meets the screening requirements pursuant to Florida statutes 402-305 and 402-3055. There's a number of organizations. You can see their information down there on the right-hand 
your left hand corner. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of organizations that are authorized to do that. And this is one of them. And this has Kim's many blessings. And I read that there was also a Nikki something. How do, are they one and the same or? I'm not sure, honestly. I'm not sure the, um, yes ma'am, thank you. I believe Kim. that was in, I believe that was in an argument made by the Apple. appellant. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as, for the purposes of when this was conducted, this, the building, um, as he testified, he testified the building was marked as Kim's many blessings. Yes, I believe we took a photo or something at the time we did the original site inspection and that's what kind of Okay, that's that, the when, name of the daycare currently. Yeah, when the applicant came back, well, this is not a, you know, child care facility. We're like, well, we look at things. We try to make things work. Um, and we simply called the number that was listed on that building and on their sign. And it was addressed at 2300 North Pace Boulevard. Um, and they provided this information to us. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the, the child care is Kim's and many blessings. And it's currently in operation and has been in operation. As far as you know, it has been in operation since January of 2022. Yes. If I understand what you're saying, I got, to me, there have been three inspections. Am I right? Yes. I would say uh, one with a, um, a supplement and actually two. So one with a supplement and a modification. And the most recent one done in November. So At the time of the last inspection, the one I am assuming is the subject of this proceeding, the child care facility was there and was operating at that time. Is that correct? The verification of that, all I can tell you is that they have an active license they have an active license. We don't go and monitor vehicles coming in and out or anything like that. Um, I can just say they have an active license. Can you also clarify, um, there was a phone number in, on the building, correct? Yes. And did you call the phone number that was on the building? We did. Yep. And what happened when you called that number? They quickly provided us with a copy of what you see in front of you. And at the time, did they give you any indication that they were no longer active? Mm-mm, not that, at all. Oh, thank you. Yep. Uh, it, uh, it appears to me that the, it is this last inspection that, uh, it, to me, is the one that we, as I've said, is the subject of this proceeding. And it is important, uh, at least to my thinking, the status of the facility at the time of that inspection because that is the one that is being appealed at this point uh, or is a subject of, of this proceeding. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think we should hear from the petitioner uh, maybe at this point to get his perspective on this, if nobody else has got questions. Sure. Mr. Dometer. Um, before we go any further, I just want to make, I believe the owner of Kim's Many Blessings is here. She wasn't, I don't know that she was here when we started. I'm the um, pastor, and I'm the owner of the building. Oh, okay. So I don't know if the, if the board, because the board had some questions about that. She's present. She could stand up and be sworn in and give information that would assist the board. Sure. Okay. Uh, if you could come forward, please. You can just come up to this microphone up here if you don't mind. <coughs> when you step up there, if you would, state your name for the record and okay. turn to be sworn in by the court reporter. Okay. I'm Pastor Sylvia Tisdale, owner of um, the building at 2300 North Pace Boulevard. Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, and can you, um, is that at, that's at 2300 North Pace Boulevard? 
Yes. Forgot my mic was off. And um, go Pastor, ahead. And Pastor Teasdale, when your testimony, at least I'm interested in, the date of this last inspection was when? November 23rd, 2022. Pastor Teasdale, could you ad address what was the status of that building on, what was it, November the 23rd? November the 23rd? Yes, ma'am. Um, it was um, a path. I used the building also for my church. And I leased it also as a daycare. So on Wednesday night and Sundays, I have my church service. But during the week, Monday through Friday, it's used as uh, a daycare. Um, November the 23rd, it was leased as a daycare, but it was leased under Nikki's uh, beautiful day t daycare. At, at the time that you leased it, uh, you were, did you also conduct your church services yes. even though it was leased? Yeah, always. So it was serving as a house of worship, if I understand your testimony, continuously, notwithstanding what daycare yeah, activities always were continue to place. use. Always continue to use the building as my church. Um, as well as the daycare. It has multiple use, it's, so it's so no, it's so no it interference. Was, so it was also functioning as a, as a worship, church. Yeah, worship, worship, place of worship, in that on Wednesday night, I have my Bible study. On Sunday mornings, I have uh, my church services. Um, and then Monday through Friday, uh, it's operated as a daycare from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yes, ma'am. And so it is, and it is, uh, was at the time that we were discussing in November, if I, I just want to be sure that the record is clear, that notwithstanding whatever daycare activities that took place there, it was functioning as weekly, as your weekly house of worship, your church. And the daycare. Oh, I, I understand that, but it was also a church is yeah. what, I, what I'm getting at. It was Is the county aware of that fact? Absolutely. So if you go, um, we didn't un know that it was actually a daycare until we did the site inspection and these results, and we got verification as provided well, to us. But if you go to the Scambia County Property Appraisers, it identifies as a church. They have a use code. I can't interpret what they use, but it identifies as a church. So we kind of got two and one on this one, it appears. And that's why she was able to get the daycare under religious exemption because um, we sign off on that it was a church and that we certified along with, her, with the, the daycare. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, it has never been a problem. And Kim Daycare was there before for about um, two years before um, Nikki's beautiful child care came and started using it. So it has never been a problem. It has been certified um, through the county, um, fire inspection, um, all of the necessary inspections that it was needed has been done with the church yes, and the daycare. Yes, ma'am. Pastor, what is the name of your church? Epps Christian Center. And I have one more question for you. If it's, and this is where I'm confused, if it's Nikki's daycare, why whenever you call them, they gave you this Kim so many blessings from 2022 to 2023, when in November of 2022, Nikki's was was in was working. So I'm a little confused. I'm unaware of any type of name change process. All I know is that this was provided with a DCF number, um, and it's up to the applicant to show that it isn't. Um, once this is provided and further verification. <clears throat> With the Scambia County property appraiser identifying as a church, 
we right. see that there was a conflicting use. That was enough for staff. Okay. But so. Nikki Daycare does have a license to operate there. Well, and they have been doing it since it, at that time. When did Nikki's daycare start? Huh? When did Nikki's when did the lease when was the lease signed with Nikki's daycare? Um in November, the first of November. Okay. But what she was doing, um, you know, she was getting all of her paperwork and stuff done. When but, did Kim's daycare no longer accept children? When did they close their doors? I think around July, Kim okay. um, was no longer there around July. Of, and then um, Nikki year. started in November. Yes. But what okay. she was doing, what uh, Nikki was doing, was getting all of her paperwork and stuff done so that she could um, start her daycare okay. there. And about how, how many children um, come to the daycare with, uh, at Nikki's? I don't know because um, I don't go, you know, visiting unless I have to. But she qualifies for at least 40 kids. That's what I was told by her. Okay. I, Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I have one last question. Uh, not, not, not for you, Pastor. I uh, think she might have a question. Uh, I, I just want to make sure that the um, that he didn't have any questions for her, Mister. The matter. Well, I don't know how long she can stay, so I didn't know if you wanted to question her now. Um, if that's okay, is that okay? Before, before we get into the cross examination, I have one question for the staff. I understand that the daycare issue has come up, but is it relevant in a way if this indeed is a functioning house of worship, a church? It doesn't that prohibition uh, isn't a church one of the prohibitions? Yes, sir. They're one in the well, same. Does it matter whether or not there's a daycare center or not? Really, it identifying um, as a church when we first, before we even go out there, um, that's part of our verification once it identifies as a church. And then we got out there and see, well, there's a daycare here as well, which is sometimes associated with places of worship. Um, it, it identified as a church and was verified that there's some type of child care facility, so... Well, assuming that there was no daycare there at all and there was no it would, testimony about right, sure. daycares and whether or not it exists or not, this appeal would still uh, be at basically the same posture because yes, sir. this is a church. Yes, sir. Uh, is, am, am I cor correct in, a, in Yes, that? sir. And... and if it identifies from some source of um, government information, that is acceptable to staff when we're verifying those things. Um, so it did as a church, and then a field visit showed that it was also possibly verified as a child care facility. So we got two things that are conflicting uses that the same regulations apply. Um, it so we kind of treat it the same. It would have been helpful if that had been in our original uh, well, evidentiary packet. Right. I, I want to say that uh, when we had the appeal, yes, we were kind of led to believe that it's not a church that it's um, that the church owns it, but it's being the building is being used as a daycare. And I think that's where the confusion lies. If we could, if we could just, I want to make sure that Mr. Demetter wants to make a statement, but if he can make sure he's at a microphone and not speaking over the, anyone on the board at yeah. the same time. Okay. Uh, and he's entitled to a cross-examination, too. And uh, uh, as soon as we filter out, I guess, our questions, then he's entitled to a full examination of all the items that 
the pastor has spoken about. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, and we don't want to. We want to be sure that he's given a full and fair opportunity to present all his evidence. Yes, sir. Uh, so, um, just to also put in the file that it has been my church since April two thousand six. And it's and it functions weekly. Weekly. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Do you have anything, Mr. Demeter? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say that I believe this is accessory structure. Uh, it's not the the main building because uh, Epps Christian Center, uh, the sign that states Epps Christian Center. What's what's the address of that building? It's 2300 North Pace Boulevard. Uh, Epps Christian Center is further down the road, not at 2300. I have two buildings. I have a building under the name Epps Christian Center that is used as my soup kitchen. I have a soup kitchen, and that building is at 2202 North Pace Boulevard, but it's owned by Epps Christian Center. And then I have the building that use as my church, which is at 2300 North Pace Boulevard. Do we All have of photos that. of that she's discussing? What's you the want? question again? I'm sorry. Do we have photos of the two buildings she's talking about? Um, we could pull up Google Street View or something such as that. Um, I own all of the property um, at Booby. It's Epps Christensen on the Booby of Pace and um, Pace and Booby is the building that I use as my church, and right across the street, um, 2202 North Pace is the building as, that we use as my soup kitchen, and then in between that, it, we have property that we use as the parking area. So all of that is owned by Epps Christian Center. <laughs> Um, if we could, um, um, I don't know if he has any more questions for her. Hey. Did you, did you have any more questions? Yes. Oh, you need? So you just, to, okay. just to go back over that again, Epps Christian Center sign does not exist at 2300 North Pace Boulevard, yes or no? The only reason is because the storm, the hurricane, um, that we just recently had, what was the name of the hurricane? Sally told the whole, um, destroyed a lot of my building, and I had to go and replace all of the top of um, the building, and I haven't had the time to put my sign back up, but that's the only reason. But before Hurricane Sally, I had my sign all up on the building, I'm Epps Christian Center. That. Sorry to hear about that. You know, hurricane's tough. Um, <clears throat> so the daycare exists at 2300 North Pace Boulevard, and you say you're holding worship at 2300 as well. Um, I mean, I, I argue that, but based on limited evidence, all I have to present to, uh, to, to see what her comment is is the public water records request that I put on this property for a year. If it, you, you guys want to see a copy of it, because um, the water records on uh, multiple months are at the minimum for what you get paid for water. There's a minimum usage that you have to pay, and for multiple months, it wouldn't even break the minimum. So not only do we allegedly have a child care facility with 43 kids in it and a church that's holding worship, where are these people going in the bathroom? So my argument is... Could we, it's, excuse me, if he has a question, could he ask the question of the witness? This is not the time to make argument. So if Epps Christian Center, uh, you said it's a soup kitchen down the road. That's, is that your primary business? What, the soup kitchen? Yes. Yeah, I'm in the soup kitchen daily, um, really from 6 a.m. to 7 uh, every day and we have food pantry as well as um, we feed the homeless. And uh, the church name is Epps Christian Center? Yes. So All the property is on the Epps Christian Center. Okay, so 
If the main business is not at 23 North, but what's the other address of the other building? 2202 North Pace Boulevard. 2202 North Pace Boulevard. That would be the primary business then, based on that. And this would be an accessory structure. No, no. Um, I started having my church. My church is my main uh, uh, ministry, is having a church. And my soup kitchen is an outreach of the church. So if I type in 2300 North Pace Boulevard on Google Maps, it comes up Epps Christian Center. It comes up Epps Christian Center. And your, your primary and if you business come, is soup kitchen, which is... Not, that's not my primary business. That's my outreach of Epps Christian Center, 2202 North Pace. Okay. And I have... Um, services at the Epps Christian Center. I have revivals, uh, meeting, and the only use that the daycare gets is uh, Monday through Friday from 6A to 6P. Okay. All right, that, that's all for me at this time. If the board doesn't have any questions, could I do a quick follow-up? Sure. Okay. What we have on the board in front of you, you can see he, uh, the, the applicant... I mean, the uh, appellant requested or mentioned bringing it up on Google. This is a Google search of Epps Christian Center. If you, if, uh, if you could help me and click on that on the right-hand side where it says Epps Christian Center on the picture. And you look and you'll see that's the building that comes up for the location of Epps Christian Center on Google. This is the 2300 address that he talked about. Um, if, you, if we can go um, scroll down, if it will. Right. And there, that's where you see the child daycare center sign as well. If you can go, just go back. We're just going to go back. And if you can look over there on that right-hand side, um, you'll see that at the, see the address says 2300 North Pace Boulevard for Epps Christian Center, which, as you recall, the testimony is that's the location we're discussing. Can we go back to that satellite view real quick? Can we go down the road to the right here, two clicks? Now, right there to your left, you see this red and white sign that says Epps Christian Center and something outreach, ministry mm -hmm. outreach. E-Comfort. E-Comfort outreach. Right. It's okay. And that's, that's your building where you stated is your primary business, your soup kitchen. No, that's my outreach that um, I do my nonprofit out of, which is under the name of E-Comfort. But it's... it's it says that's Christian Center on the side. Right, though. right, because um, um, eComfort is an outreach of Epps Christian Center. And when I started the soup kitchen ministry, I was um, under Epps Christian Center, but um, because of the outreach, we have eComfort. So how, just, do you, how do you get more people to come to your church if there's no sign on 23 and North Face Boulevard that says it's a church? Objection, Your Honor. This is just argumentative at this point. And we're getting a field of what the purpose of it is, which is determine whether or not it's a church or, and or a daycare at that location. I, th I think with the uh, awkwardness of uh, so sure. many... I'd like the, the, them to continue. Okay. So, uh, if there if there's no sign on 2300 North Pace Boulevard it says it's a church, there's just a daycare facility sign. I I'm just I. This the, first what time, I this told first time you. Heard, what I told you. Oh, oh, oh. This is the first time. Okay. This is the first time I've heard that you've had uh, you know you hold service at 23 North Pace Boulevard. So this is new to me. So I'm just trying to understand it better. Okay, what I told you is that, and you will... Okay, okay, okay. Um, what I told you is that my church at Epps Christian Center was, um, Hurricane Sally was destroyed, and it took me actually two years to get um, the insurance company to um, really help me bring it back up to where it is now. And the only thing that... Um, and it used to have, if you go all the way back in records, it used to have Epps Christian Center sign on the big blue part of it. And I'm in the, I've been calling around trying to get um, my sign put back up, but I haven't. Okay. But um, 
I have service. Everybody know that it's my church. So they come to Epps Christian Center. If you can uh, get up on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. <laughs> is my service time. Uh, we're also on Face Live on Sunday mornings at 8, 8 a.m. If you can get up that time, you can come around and you'll see that uh, I have church service there. Um, also, on Wednesday night, we have Bible study there. Those are my service time at the building. Um, that soup kitchen building is used uh, primarily as my outreach, um, and it's a nonprofit. So, um, and how many people attend uh, service at 23 on North Face Boulevard on average? Uh, on the average, I have a small ministry. And the reason why I have a small ministry is because um, people know that I have a ministry, an outreach that reach out to the hungry, homeless, and the hurting. And because of that, uh, a lot of people don't want to come around. So it's not one of those big time um, denominational churches like a Baptist church, Methodist church. So uh, roughly it, what it's, number? It's, well, uh, roughly we have under 25. Roughly under one, where they right. park. But the word says, as long as two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be there. So I'm not. I don't have a church um, looking for numbers. And uh, just if last one question, person come, I have service. And last question is, where do they park when they come for for service there? Okay, if you can see my field, right over there. Yep. Right there, in between, they park there. So and, I park park and, and, I, and, and I parked behind, parked behind the building. And I parked behind the building. But there's a field that we use for my parking area. So they do not park at 2300 North Face Boulevard. Mr. Chairman, that's really, in my opinion, not very relevant. Right. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand it more. But again, this is the first time I heard that there was mass being old there, so I'm just trying to... Well. First of all, I'll object to the mischaracterization of this as mass. She's been very clear she's non-denominational. Um, and I agree that we are getting far afield of the purpose of this appeal. This is information that was out there and available to him. All he had to do, like he said, was put this into put in the address of 2300 and he would have had this pop up. But he didn't do his homework for this. And we're getting far afield of what the purpose of this appeal is. Okay. I mean, it does say church on Google. That's fine. We can proceed. Pastor, Thank you. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I appreciate your testimony here. It's it's definitely helps us on the board understand the true situation. I was wondering if you could, um, and we've had this done in past instances um, where the appellant has reached out to. Um, different businesses uh, wanting to know whether or not they're for or against the situation. Um, this I'm against it. I'm sorry? Say, say again. I didn't hear you. Against. Against. Okay. I just wanted to know what your opinion was. Right. Okay. Thank you. Board members, any, any uh, other questions of the speaker? If not, any questions of the appellate? Thank you, Pastor. We'll call you if, if uh, anything comes up okay. here today. Mr. DeMetta, you want to? Uh, no, I, I had some follow-up questions that I wanted to ask of staff before we Sorry. go on to Mr. Yes, DeMetta's go, go right ahead. approach. Um, if you could, um, talk to us about the difference between when it's a church and when it's a daycare center as far as the measurements that are required under the um, Land Development Code. There's no difference. It's treated one and the same. So explain to the board, and I want to make sure we were clear on this, um, you learned that it was a church when you first looked at it on the website, uh, on the county web, I mean on the, yes, on the county property appraiser's website? Right. We use a variety of tools, um, Scammy County GIS, Scammy County property appraisers, Google Maps, um, before we actually go out and do a site inspection. Um, and this identified primarily with the property appraiser um, and through Google that this was a church. Um, we generate a basic map 
we do a site inspection, we drive the area, and we noticed on this facility, not only did it identify on the church through our research prior to our site inspection, but there was a sign indicating that it was a child care facility as well. They're treated both the same, so from staff's perspective, um, the code simply reads that it's a door-to-door -door measurement from the entrance, the main entrance of the facility to the main entrance of the child care facility or place of worship. So it's treated exactly the same. So. Um, as she, as, um, I'm sorry, as the pastor explained, um, they had had problems with a sign um, since Hurricane Sally at her main, and, and problems with the building at, from Hurricane Sally at the main, at the church. Um, can you um, explain, if you had seen Epps Christian Center sign, would you have also reached out to her as the church? Yes, if there was some type of um, jazz that was provided to us as what happened. Typically, we don't reach out and verify. If it identifies somehow as a church or child care facility, then it's accepted as such. It's up to the applicant to show it wasn't. The results were received by the applicant, um, and they challenged that it was an actual child care was not an actual child care facility, and that's when we called. Um, typically, we don't necessarily do that, but um, that's what occurred in this case. So, if he had questioned it, questioned you about a church being at that location, you would have checked. You would have followed up just to make sure. Certainly. Okay, but you didn't have that kind of communication from Mr. Demetter. Not about a church, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Board members, any any questions of uh, staff before we move to uh, Mr. Demetter? I have one further question of staff. Um, is it the property appraiser that's showing it as a uh, church? Correct. If you identify this through the record search, Skimmy County Property Appraiser, we can do it if need be. Um, they assign use codes to right. pieces of property. Um, they're universally accepted, but I would let them speak to that and how they do that. Um, but it's identified as a church. Um, Rachel pulled it up here. The use code, as shown for 2300 North Pace Boulevard, is a church. And also the property uh, appraiser um, the tax collector, I'm sorry, um, would notify it as well as a church, correct? Possibly, but I'm well, not it's, familiar. It's, what I'm getting at, it, it's a uh, not-for-profit organization, correct? Right. They, they probably have some type of non-taxable you know, exemptions and stuff like that, but we didn't verify that. But I would assume that that would be the case. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do we have the property appraiser's uh, report that's before us now into evidence? We can have that printed off and we'll submit it to assist you. It's not in the documents that we provided. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we admit the property appraiser's report uh, concerning uh, the Epps Christian Center Incorporated uh, 2300 North Pace Boulevard. We're having that printed off now and we'll submit it to you. We, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? If not, signify approval by raising your right hand. Passage unanimously. Any other questions of staff? At this time, if not, Mr. Demetter, would you like to? Is your mic on? Yes, I believe it's on. Yep. Oh, thanks. All right, so let's bring it back around to the beginning here. Um, at this time, I like to enter into, I guess, evidence, a supporting document. It's mentioned uh, within the appeal itself, the, the case law I've been citing. If everybody would like a copy of the case law, I don't know if it's, uh, it helps at all, but then you can see the case in its entirety that I'll be quoting. I got 10 copies. Board members, uh, would uh, you like to make a motion on this, on admitting uh, th these items? Mr. Chairman, I am I think it's a Kansas case, am I right? No, this is Florida District Appeal, District 1. Uh, and, uh, and there was a Florida case, too. 
I'm this not read the the, I, the Kansas case to me is not really relevant. It's a different state jurisdiction, a different. I'm presuming this case is different District laws. Going to County, Florida uh, the Florida case is different. It's somewhat relevant. Uh, I mean, in the sense that it's here I, locally. Uh, I'd like I could to be hear some on argument that. on it. If I could be heard on that matter, the case he's referring to, it's based on a statute that was appealed, I mean, repealed in, in uh, 1972. So it's based on, on a statute that no longer exists. In Escambia County, as you're aware, the dis determination of distances is based solely on, is, is controlled by the law, the LD, I'm sorry. <laughs> One more the LDC, the Land Development Code. Um, so any relevance, this, this no longer is relevant because it's based on law that no longer exists. Um, there are additional cases that came out since then that are from the state of Florida that, that address this issue, um, that, uh, that have addressed the subsequent a local code, a local ordinance, not in Escambia County, but um, in Jacksonville, where it adds similar language that discusses that the, um, that the rules of the road are to be adhered to when practicable. If um, it would not be practicable to require a pedestrian to walk a mile or two out of his way to reach a destination 10 or 100 feet from his point of departure. The purpose behind the, the LDC is to measure door to door. It is not to set up obstacles in reaching that door to door measurement. It is not an actual pedestrian that's walking the distance. It is a measurement to determine whether or not there is a building whose primary usage, in this case a church or a daycare, is within a thousand feet. There is no relevance to this case law in determining the LDC because it's not discussion of the LDC, it is a discussion of law that no longer exists. No, it was discussion of how a pedestrian thoroughfare is described and whether or not a parking lot can be used as such. And this is good law and I've had, I got a shepherd's report on it and I've researched this uh, tons, had tons of people's uh, opinions on this, and this is still good law, and that case that you're referring to even cites this case within it, that they attempted to use uh, this case in their own specific instance, but in, in that case specifically, the parking lot encompassed the whole building, therefore they had to go through a parking lot. So this is good case law. How does Westlaw treat this? Is is it good law or not? It has the the Kansas case as the uh, uh, as the Kansas case is not relevant to where right, we are. Right, it just has the Kansas case uh, as treating it. Um, it does not address the fact that the law was repealed uh, until you go and put in the law, and then it's repealed. Okay, in other words, the Florida this Florida case that Ms. Uh, Dewitter is uh, referencing. Is it, does it have a red flag? No, it has not? a yellow flag because it's a Kansas case and not a Florida case. Florida I thought you referenced a Florida case. It, am I wrong, sir? Florida, Florida adopted, within this court, Florida adopted the Kansas case uh, uh, citation into Florida law, into within the, what they saw within the case. It's where it becomes part of Florida now to where they're accepting this as a way of how to measure pedestrian thoroughfare. I'd like the board to ask our attorney her yeah. opinion view on this discussion. Yeah. The case was from 1963. It was construing, as uh, Ms. Hankins stated, a statute that has since been repealed as of 1972, and that was within the state beverage law, and it was then a statute that required a certain distance between a liquor store and a church um, or I think or a school. So that used to be a state law many, many decades ago, and this was a case that arose. It actually involved Martins, if you remember Martins at the circle on Mobile Highway. And as you know, that is a very strange, strangely configured piece of property that had several frontages and it was disputed as to how to measure the distance from Martins and in fact what was the main entrance of Martins to measure to and I don't remember if it was a school or a church in the case um, so that was the case then 
It, in 2006, was distinguished by an appellate court of Connecticut. Um, and I do believe that what governs in this case is the county's land development code. And can the staff give us a synopsis of, um, I think the, the, the issue is the parking lot, is that correct? Whether or not yes. you can traverse a pa parking lot, does the LDC comment in that at all? No, it just simply says from door to door along the ordinary pedestrian route. Now, uh, what year did you say that case got repealed? It wasn't the case that or was the, repealed. The, the, the statute, statute was repealed in 1972. Okay. And that then, was uh, Florida statute section 561.44. Then why in 1977 was a Florida District Court of Appeals case, ABC Liquors versus Skaggs Albertsons, citing this same case if it's a relevant bad law? I'm not saying that it's bad law. I'm saying that the statute was repealed. None, I mean, and regardless, what governs in this case is what's in the county's code, not a case that may construe a state statute. But the yeah, fact so, of the matter so is their the case was, was previously re repealed. So their case was fact. specific to a statute. Mm -hmm. We got that. But what, what they found within this case is how to determine measurement of pedestrian thoroughfare. So is that good law? I believe so. Is there any objection to that, if I can move on with it? That, that may be considered persuasive. However, as I said, the Land Development Code is what governs. Okay, so uh, we'll come back to it. Well, let's see, uh, did we have, get a motion? Michael, did we get a motion? No, sir, I was just inquiring as well, we're to We're still this. just discussing. Are you requesting us to admit this that relevant? case? Uh, yeah, if, I, if I'm able to, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'm, Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't think it's, in my opinion, germane to what we're talking about. Our council has told us uh, that the uh, Land Development Code, the ordinance governs here, and I think that's what we should look to. Um, it is the current, quote, law. We've had the county uh, uh, attorney tell us the same thing. And uh, in my opinion, while it may be interesting, it's 50 years old and uh, it's just not, in my opinion, uh, something that uh, we should be considering. We need to look at what our ordinances require because that is what we are governed by. The, the problem the land, is... The, I'm sorry. The Land Development Code uses similar language to what was in that now repealed sta state statute and that it states the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel within public rights of way, whereas the, the repealed statute was the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel along public thoroughfare. Um, so to the extent you find that persuasive, to the extent that you find that um, enlightening in terms of what is included in the land development code, um, you know, that's for you to determine. But the problem is the LDC does not specify or give definition to what a pedestrian right of way is. So that needs to be so determined. So then you would defer to your, your <coughs> planning director um, who has made that determination. It, the, right now, what we're doing is admitting or not admitting this, uh, these statements as uh, uh, in, into the record. And it appears that the desire of the board is to not uh, admit uh, these things into evidence. Is that is that my understanding, board? I think we need a motion in a second. Okay. Um, uh, if I understood you 
uh, you said that the language that we're talking about on this um, defunct state law is essentially encapsulated in our ordinance now? Is that what you just read in your, your comments? Am I right? No, no, not exactly, but it uses similar language. Well, that's, that, there, that, it does state the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel. And it, this, the statute included along a public thoroughfare versus what's in our code. Um, let's see. And it uses public rights of way. And from main entrance of the place of business to the main entrance of the place of worship or child care facility. So what I'm trying to understand is, is it the language is more or less the old law is in, in encapsulated in our new uh, or in our LDC now is that right that one phrase is similar but the provisions are different and I, I, I honestly I read that case uh, when uh, I think last November and I believe there were several issues that were considered in that case that may or may not coincide with what's at issue in, in this appeal Mr. Chairman, I don't see how it's going to be helpful to uh, to admit this 50-year-old statute that's no longer in force. Uh, so I would move that we exclude it. A uh, motion has been made to ex exclude these uh, the verbiage we've been hashing over. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. It passes unanimously that the board is not accepting that into evidence. All right, so we'll focus on the land development code here. And section 5-5.6 sidewalk, sidewalks and bikeways. Uh, they must be installed in conformance to current ADA standards and all applicable guidelines to be to include but not limited to the can latest we, additions can, I'm sorry, to the DOT excuse transit me, facility Excuse guidelines. me, I apologize. I'm not sure what he's doing now. He was talking about introducing exhibits, and now he's making, it sounds like he's going into his argument as opposed to introducing exhibits. So if we could be clear so as to what introducing he's... introducing it or not introducing it? <coughs> I'm, I'm just trying to clarify no. what he's doing. That's okay. I was under the impression that we're not introducing the exhibit. Are we introducing it? Well, what they had ruled was that the case law could not come in. I don't know if any of the other items, we haven't discussed the other items. Case law is what we're talking about. Okay, so if it's not in, then we're, are we going to move on to my, my next argument? Well, are you talking about an exhibit or argument? You know, at least for me, it would be helpful if since this is your chance to make your main presentation, in looking over this file last night, I what I could glean for or from it was that you, number one, believe that the measurement was not properly taken. Correct. It's unstatutory. All right. All right. That was the first thing that I gleaned from it. The Second thing that I took from it was the question of which I think we discussed uh, already what the status of the structure was itself. I would appreciate, uh, it, uh, and perhaps it would be helpful to the rest of the board, if you could tell us what is wrong with the way that the measurement was taken? You've seen the last, which I presume is the last uh, uh, okay. measurement, the one that runs along Pace Boulevard. Mm -hmm. If you could tell us what's wrong with that, how the county erred in, in taking that particular uh, measurement, can we pull up the most recent uh, denial map with the route shown, please? 
That's going to be in the final. That was that's going to be in the exhibit um, page. Thirteen is the beginning of the is the application. Page fourteen and fifteen. Oh, yeah. Page fifteen is I believe what you're asking for. Correct. Okay. Uh, I I have two problems with this route shown. Uh, the one being through my parking lot when there is a sidewalk coming from my front door that attaches to St. Catherine on the north side of my property. If we could, I apologize, can we, let me turn. Can we scroll down so we're on one solid p picture? Yeah, there we go. Can we actually scroll down to the next one? I think it'd be better to illustrate this a little better. All right, so uh, go up a little bit. Just a sm smidge right there, perfect. You see that the route that they show here comes from my main entrance, the, the building circled in blue, and uh, goes straight out to Pace Boulevard, uh, along Pace Boulevard sidewalk. But right where that arrow is at is a sidewalk that attaches and completely from my front door and goes north to St. Catherine Avenue, and uh, it, that's the nearest public thoroughfare. That's the nearest place where a pedestrian has a right of way. My argument being at the beginning of this route is that uh, a pedestrian cannot just go straight to the parking lot for the law, for the statutes, when there's a sidewalk provided that goes to St. Catherine. Now, uh, the, the, my entire parking lot extends the entire width of my property from north to south, and uh, on the south side, it attaches into the neighboring parking lot. So there, there's no other way a pedestrian can uh, leave per the statute and per the laws besides going north along the sidewalk of the parking lot, coming across to Pace Boulevard, then coming down. The second issue I have with the route, if we scroll down just a little bit more, a little bit more, that when we come to the corner of Pace Boulevard and Bobe Street, that uh, instead of, uh, they have the pedestrian leaving the crosswalk there at the corner and uh, makes them traverse like there's a, a a curb and a pile of dirt and a stop sign all piled up on each other. There's not enough room for anybody to safely navigate to get to the shore of the road. That they would have to get completely uh, in front of traffic that was approaching in order to get to the shoulder, to hug the side of the building, to get to their main entrance. My my argument, the second argument, is that they need to come down Bobe Street to the other corner where a sidewalk exists that gets them perfectly across the street with the the entrance driveway of of the child care facility. So if we'll go back, I guess, to the beginning of this route. Mr. Demeter, can you, can I ask a question real yep. quick? Because I had asked this question earlier if there was a sidewalk on Bobe and was told no, there's not. There is one on Bobe. It's on there, the south side of Bobe, but there is one there, yes. There is a sidewalk on the south side of Bobe. Correct. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. So uh, to reiterate further, uh, my first issue is going through the parking lot of, of my business, not using the sidewalk. <coughs> so what I'd like to refer to is the Scamby County Land Development Code about sidewalks and bikeways. And to where I was reading before, uh, just to recover it, uh, sidewalks and bikeways will be installed in conformance with current ADA standards and all applicable, applicable guidelines. To include, but not limited to, the latest editions of FDOT transit facility guidelines and FDOT roadway standard specifications. This is support, to support adopted bicycle and pedestrian plan routes and or applicable grant at programs to provide connectivity with the existing sidewalks or required by Florida Department of Transportation. Now, I went through all the FDOT transit facility guidelines, FDOT roadway standard specifications, and uh, you know, everything uh, that this refers to by FDOT. And those guidelines that FDOT comes up with are based on studies that they do to help guide the state with coming up with uh, better laws to promote safer roads, safer sidewalks, things of that nature. Uh, one of the studies that they did uh, was the Florida Pedestrian and Bicycle Strategic Safety Plan. And within this plan, they did a bunch of studies and uh, uh, they took a, a data set of incidents that occur within parking lots, and they found that 60% of backing incidents, or 60% of incidents in a parking lot occur with a vehicle and a, a person. 60% of those uh, incur injury to a pedestrian, and 32% of those uh, uh, incur death to a pedestrian. 
So inherently within their, their uh, strategic safety plan, they're saying that, you know, a parking lot's pretty dangerous. And this was to promote uh, better uh, adaptations of sidewalks and crosswalks at parking lots in order to keep pedestrians from just going through to get to where they need to go. For the example of my business, there's a sidewalk that's there to promote pedestrian safety. Why are we proposing a route that's just straight through all the traffic that's coming into the parking lot or cars coming in and out? There's a sidewalk present, sidewalk safe. There's a hierarchy to pedestrian thoroughfare that we need to follow here. Um, and uh, so that's my issue in, with, with the, the beginning of the route at the parking lot, and you know, which I still believe the case law is good from earlier. But um, later on, down at the corner of uh, Bobe and Pace, we do have a sidewalk present that's on the south side of the road that they're not using in that route. And uh, because the LDC does not have a, um, a uh, definition or a guideline to follow for what a pedestrian thoroughfare is, uh, you know, you would just discuss with them that they got to use sidewalks and they have to use shortest route possible, things of that nature. But, uh, uh, the, you know, the Florida State statute specifies, uh, Florida State Statute 316.130, pedestrians and traffic res regulations where sidewalks are provided no pedestrians shall unless required by other circumstances walk along or upon the portion of a roadway paid for ve vehicular traffic i mean both my parking lots pay for vehicular traffic and bobe street is paid for vehicular traffic why are we having the pedestrian walk along the road to get to the child care or church facility when uh you know by statute they can't do that there's a sidewalk present it doesn't specify whether or not sidewalk exists on that side or the other side. It just says where sidewalks are provided. Uh, any objections to anything at this time? I want to get stuff in order more here. Any comments? I have some questions. Yeah. Um, I'll remind you that you are sworn in and you're a witness in this case. Yep. And those questions are based on it. So what was your measurement when you did a measurement? So... My measurement, uh, well, what, what's the route? What's your, what's your, let's, which route did you take for your first measurement? So, well, there's two routes that I, say, say you ignore the parking lot idea, and we just go straight through the parking lot. And if you go down Pace Boulevard and you cross the street of Bogue to get, go down the sidewalk, and then safely navigate across the street to get into the child care facility, it comes into, I believe it was 1,015 feet. It was in a previous document I provided to them via email. Okay. So on that one, let me ask you a question. Where you're wanting to cross the street at Bobie Street, Correct. where you're wanting to cross it, is there a marked crosswalk there? There is not. Okay. So, um, and when you want them to go back and to the back door, is there a marked crosswalk there? So, well, is there a marked crosswalk at the back where you want them to safely navigate the street? No, that, that's the same question. No. Okay, so you're so what you're wanting here is for them, under your theory of how measurements should be made, it should be the actual path that the individual is walking. It's not about whether or not we're going door to door. Is that correct? Yeah, my argument is that the, the route. Needs I'm not asking to... your argument. I'm asking you to answer this question. Are you saying that the that the measurement that's done by the county should be only the path that a pedestrian would take in a right of way. Yes, because that's what the LDC specifies along pedestrian rights of ways. Okay, and so when you want them to go back into the parking lot of the back of this building that we're looking at here, there is no right of way crosswalk, is that correct? There is no crosswalk there, but a pedestrian does have a right of way to cross the street when needed. On a side so street. how would they get back across Bobby Street based on your measurement? They cross the street. Where? Where is it safe for them to cross? That's Between, your concern. Right there at Epps Christian Center driveway and West Bobe Seat driveway. I mean, there's no other 
any 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 case a pedestrian has to walk up their driveway since they don't provide a sidewalk or anything going to the front door so they have to use their driveway on any route possible including the one that's been provided so they would have to go from the sidewalk leaving Epps Christian Center driveway across the Bob Street driveway so in your, your what you're telling this board is that it is safer for a pedestrian to cross a road where there is no sidewalk and to actually jaywalk than it is for them to walk through the parking lot at your building. I don't believe crossing Bob Street is jaywalking. There's no crosswalk there. So in your situation, your, it is your opinion, it is safer for them to avoid traffic turning off of a main thoroughfare and cross that street in order for to, to do a measurement. Yes. Then it is to walk through the parking lot at your building. Well, because the, you know these guidelines are written to, to cover all people. You know, it has to be somebody in a wheelchair, somebody in a walker, somebody that's blind walking with a stick. And that let, corner right there is Let me clarify dangerous. which guidelines you're talking about. You're talking about something that has nothing to do with the LDC. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm talking specifically about the LDC. It says pedestrian rights of ways. So your rights of ways have to, the, all, the, the rights of ways are, are, are supposed to be the safest way for a pedestrian. Are you familiar with rights of way? Yes. Okay. So what is that area right there next to the building? that has a fire hydrant on it. This section of grass right here? Right. That should be has an a fire hydrant on it. That should be an easement. So you don't recognize that as a right of way. It has a public street sign, which is the stop sign, correct? I mean, you could call it the shoulder of road, but since this is so outdated that since you guys spent a couple million dollars repairing all these uh, crosswalks and stuff and everything, all the dirt they dug out and all the the concrete's a lot higher built up on this corner that the only way a pedestrian can get over to the shoulder of the road that you're declaring is right away is is to walk into the street i'm asking you a question is there a track. stop sign is there a public sign on that road a stop sign yes. can you see it i do see a stop sign yes. is there a is there a fire hydrant on that road there's on a fire hydrant on that road yes okay is there a mailbox located there there's a mailbox at the driveway, yes. And there's a telephone pole or a power pole there as well. Yes. Okay. So you're claiming that all those things that deal with public utilities, public safety, and, the, and control the road, that is not considered a right-of-way? Uh, in your pedestrian opinion. Pedestrian right-of-way. In your opinion. That's, that's your opinion. It's up to discussion whether or not it's pedestrian right-of-way. Just because a telephone pole and a fire hydrant exist there doesn't mean it's a pedestrian right-of-way necessarily because there's a sidewalk on the other side of the road. And it's your position that it's safer for people to walk at the to cross Bobie Street down below that building than it is for them to walk in your parking lot, based on your argument earlier. Yes, absolutely. If okay. this child care facility existed a mile down the road on the same side of the road, you would agree that using the sidewalk instead of crossing all these driveways and crossing over grass and is it would be inherently safer to use that sidewalk to get a mile down the road. So is it your intent to close off that front driveway that turns into your property so that people cannot use that because that's not the safest place. It is your intent to close the access from Pace Boulevard. Is that your intent? Let's go to the front of his building. That's their property, not my property. We're going, we're, we're going over your argument, your discussion. You, well, you, said, you kept saying your property, though. I, right. I Do you not own the property there? That's not my business. Oh, you don't own this that's, business that's, here? That's a child care facility. I'm talking church. about your property. Do you not own that business? I do own that business. Zoom, zoom, zoom in. Okay. So you see where that driveway goes into your parking lot? See right there where that goes into your parking lot? Yes. So where that goes into your parking lot, that you're not going to allow people to walk into the parking lot because it's not a safety measure? Because of your concerns about parking lots? People won't be able to drive into the parking lot there. You're going to force them to go to the far end and use that, use that sidewalk there. I mean, people can do whatever they want. I'm just saying what the statute says, what, what LDC says, that there is a hierarchy to pedestrian thoroughfare for pedestrian right-of-way. It's inherently the safest route. So the question to you is, in your opinion, the parking lot is not a safe place for people to traverse? In no, your opinion? No parking lot is. Okay. And so, in able to make it the safest you can for the people that be coming to your facility, you're going to block that front driveway? 
I've never said anything about blocking any driveway. So you don't truly have a concern about the safety of people in parking lots? People are going to do what they want. Okay, so you don't want to answer that question? No, I'm saying people are going to do what they want. I uh, understand that, you know, people... It's okay if you don't want to answer people, it. Just people, say you don't want to answer it. There, there's Mr. Chairman, I think we're getting a little bit off you're leading. course here. I'm cross-examining you. Uh, Sounds like leading. <laughs> correct. So objection leading? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a cross-examination. Okay, I, I have a question. <clears throat> um, let's go back to Bobie building, the daycare uh, ch church. Mm. It was a testimony of the pastor when uh, this building is used for a church that the pill the um, constituents of the church will park in that vacant parking lot across the street. What is, uh, how should they cross that street to get to the church? I'm, I'm asking you, ma'am. Oh, I'm not a, I can't testify. I'm not a witness. I'm an attorney, but you can ask well, him. It's based his on your knowledge of, of the law, what is the correct path? The correct path would be the uh, walkway there, the marked walkway. Okay, so they they come up the sidewalk, right? Is that correct? That's the theory. I, I can't testify, so I, all I can tell you is that when there is a walkway, and I'm sure that the county can actually testify to this better, the question might be to ask somebody who's a county planner, not me, right. not I, an attorney. I just, I just want to know what the law says. Sure, it's probably a non-conforming type of use that's been conducted for some time. Um, it would be the county's interest if they would to properly cross the crosswalk that is currently provided. I would note that that is a state road, I believe, Pace Boulevard. So any type of improvements or sidewalks or anything is going to come from the Florida Department of Transportation. Well, I'm talking about Bobby Street, not Pace. Right. That would that would be they would cross the right of way. There's a crosswalk right there. I don't know if we need to zoom in. There's a okay, crosswalk. So so they come up the the sidewalk, right, and then they cross. Palafox and Bobby, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call that. Yeah, and they go in the door right there in the front. But that door is is not is it? used. I, I don't know. It's a fire we, exit. We've 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 obliged with the applicant that possibly the back door has been used, but at this point I don't know if the front door is either. So we we've, we've tried well, to the make this. The testimony is that the back door is the main entrance. So okay. We go across the street and then we go down that right of way, the grassed area and around into the parking. Is that correct? Are you, are you talking about the back parking lot or into the grassy parking lot? You're at the grassy parking lot. Okay. You come up the sidewalk to Pace and, and Bobby. You cross that crosswalk. You walk down that right of way and into the parking area. Is that correct to get to the front door? The assumption would be yes. Okay. So in that example, if somebody was in a wheelchair, you're saying that they need to come out to the sidewalk, go down the crosswalk, and then and push as hard as they can through the grass and the dirt to get over to the driveway to get into to go to church. It's not my argument to make. They should. They should. They sh for the county, they should. Okay. Um, all right. So... Uh, While we have, um, you were asking him some questions, if we can just follow up, because I, I heard you refer to it as a right-of-way. So can you, can you explain right-of-way? Yeah, from all indications, um, from visual assessment, you know, where our legal was going with the stop sign, the fire hydrant, the, those are things you find in right-of-ways. Um, those are things that will only be in right-of-ways. But there is a difference between a pedestrian right-of-way and just public right-of-way. You know, the, the road is a right-of-way. I could drive my car on the road, but I can't drive it on the sidewalk. There's I'll difference. objection. I object because that's not the law, and I don't know if you can answer the question. But if um, anyone who deals with code enforcement, if we want to call them in here to explain what a road is and what the difference between a, a right-of-way and a road is, we can get there. But I don't think he has – first of all, he hasn't exhibited any – anything that says that he's an expert in this area and the only reason he's testifying as this is because it's for his it's for his purpose 
but he doesn't he hasn't exhibited anything to show that he's an expert even in zoning or in roads or right of ways or in code enforcement who would be the people to actually address these items regularly Mr. Chairman, I, I for one, am kind of bogged down in, I think we're, I'm not quite sure of the point we're trying either the county or uh, Mr. Demeter, I'm not quite sure what they're trying to show now. And uh, I'm hopeful that someone will make it clear exactly what the point of this last uh, of last questions have been? Because I, I frankly don't understand why exactly why we are going back and forth about this. The county doesn't want to look bad for their measurement here. I mean, they're throwing. I, throwing I object. Out the this window. is a personal. This is an attack on county employees. It's inappropriate and it is not relevant to the issue that's before this board. I mean, my case law has been thrown out. I can't even defend myself here. I'm bringing up your own LDC and you're just asking me whether or not I'm able to be an expert witness if I know the difference between right away and wrong away and every other which uh, way. I'm trying to I, defend myself. My, <laughs> to answer your question as to what I, why I was asking it, um, I was trying to figure out the path to take because to me whatever path you take here you take there okay so when when um i was looking at the um at his building okay he has a sidewalk right in front of his front door that leads to um a, if you will a crosswalk that leads then leads the to the sidewalk on pace Okay, uh, hold on, he'll, he'll show it to you. Go down some. And uh, correct me if you're wrong, is there a sidewalk? Is that, uh, is there a sidewalk from your front door that goes down the parking um, to whatever road that is? The Pace? No, Saint. Uh, my sidewalk from my front door goes in front of the parking lot and comes out to St. Catherine Avenue. Okay. And it, and it ends within public rights of way. Okay. Can I follow up on that question? Be yes. Based on his state, based on his testimony. Yes. So your statement is that your sidewalk goes all the way to St. Catherine? To public rights of way in St. Catherine, yes. So that area where there's no sidewalk is not there's no sidewalk there's a paved area between the sidewalks no i'm talking about if, you, if you can just it, zoom in on that please just as it if we could just clarify what it, what is that stuff that looks brown between the end of your sidewalk and the road uh you're the expert on this um i believe that's grass okay and is there something that looks like maybe leaves there Hmm. Well, it's outdated. You know, the parking lot looks a lot prettier now. I did a lot of work to it, but... Did you extend the sidewalk all the way to St. Catherine? The sidewalk ends in, in public thoroughfare. That's just dirt that's fallen over just as exists at the corner of Bob and Pace, just like it exists on the other driveway at the other building. So at that edge where it looks like it dead ends right there, you're saying there's actual sidewalk under that mess? No, it deadheads where a sidewalk would be if the county determined that they would want to install a sidewalk there. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way to St. Catherine. It, it goes to St. Catherine Public Rights Way, as legal as you can put it. I, if I built this building again, you, would li you people would not let me build the sidewalk any further because it has to end at the Public Rights Way for where if there was a future modification by the county to build a sidewalk, that's where it would attach if one was to come into being later on. Okay. And, and in, your, in your explanation earlier to the board, you were saying that they can't cross your, you, you're saying that they can't go through your driveway and able to measure door to door. No, I'm saying through my entire parking lot. It goes okay. straight through the parking lot where cars are parked down the driveway to the sidewalk. So to measure door to door, they can't 
go through your parking lot. Correct. Okay. And, but they can go onto private property that's on your private property walkway. That's your private property walkway, correct? Yeah, that is a private sidewalk that, that in which we'll go into our next argument here in a second. So explain. you would allow them to go down that sidewalk, but you won't allow them to go through your parking lot. Is that, is that what your statement is regarding your I mean, measurement? I mean, FDOT says 32% of uh, incidents of parking lots involve death. So my yeah, question to you is, I want to keep my customers alive. My question to you is, but there's no customers involved in this, so let's be clear. This is just a door-to-door -door measurement. You understand that, right? Along pedestrian rights of way, yes. You understand it's a door-to-door -door measurement, correct? Along pedestrian rights of way, yes. Okay, so so yes is your answer. I mean, you're, you're leading with only partial of the LDC. I'm finishing the rest of the LDC. It has to be along pedestrian rights of way, and that's the argument the entire time is the, okay. the right of way. Okay, so in your opinion, they can go on private property for the purposes if they if they do it your way is that correct as long as they use your sidewalk they can measure that sidewalk because right I, because i'm such a nice guy I provided a safe route for a pedestrian to go from public rights away to my main entrance without going through my parking lot yes you put in that sidewalk i'm the property owner so therefore okay. i have a sidewalk so you so you have not extended that sidewalk all the way to the road so there's no safe way for them to traverse that dirt I legally cannot build past that because that is the end of my property. But you had concerns about the other right of way that had dirt, right? That had a stop sign and had a... Because it's a two-foot mound right now to this day. Okay. So, so when it applies to you and it's convenient to you, then you think it's okay to traverse it. Is that correct? I mean, it's really easy for a, a wheelchair person... It's an easy to question. ...a foot, then have to go 30 feet in the dirt. So your answer is yes, that's correct. When it's convenient to you... It's uh, okay. No, Bo it's board members, insane. I believe we have uh, gotten to the point that we have got a, a rather simple uh, problem. It's gotten very complicated, and, and my thought at this time is probably to have each uh, the staff summarize, the applicant summarize. I don't... I don't see the these arguments at this point giving the board any uh, thoughts as to a decision I, I have one more that would help solidify this yeah, even would, better. Yeah. It, oh, that's what I was gonna ask is if he has any further um, now parts of his argument on uh, now I'm gonna call on you both to summarize staff to summarize first and then you to summarize but you want to make a comment before that yes go ahead now, uh, and uh, Inwood overlay uh, along Pace Boulevard for commercial properties. Uh, does anybody know what the setback is? I'm sorry, I don't. I, I think the point was he was going. He's testifying, not cross-examining anyone. So if he wants to testify, and he's an expert, he can certainly do that. But at this point, what the board has told him to do is make his final point. Then I'm gonna make my final point. All right, there is a setback uh, for Pace Boulevard for Inwood overlay. And the setback for commercial properties or any new new business, new buildings built, their setbacks have to, to match uh, similar structures and buildings in the area. And if you, if you uh, can pan the camera up to the right, uh, I guess go down St. Catherine a little bit so we can get a, a straight down shot of face. A little too far. All right, now, oh, right there, perfect. Uh, clearly, you can see my building has been built, uh, set back a lot further than the building adjacent to it. And that is because in the LDC, uh, they say that a larger setback will be allowed if, uh, if uh, pedestrian safety is taken uh, into uh, account more. So if you do something to promote pedestri pedestrian safety to get to your front door, they'll allow you a larger setback. So that sidewalk from my front door to right here, that was actually required by the county at some point. Whether or not I have that in writing, because I'm not the one who built the building, the county said, we'll give you a bigger setback for your big parking lot, but you need to put it in this sidewalk. So it's, the builders ain't putting the sidewalk just because they felt like spending money. It was required to put the sidewalk in to promote pedestrian safety. And we're, we're not using it for this route, and it promotes pedestrian safety. Board members, any, any questions of the applicant at this point? 
If not, without objection from the board, are you all kind of in agreement that we need to summarize? But is, is summarize mean vote for finishing this? Is that what you're getting at, or is that? You'll be able to make your final argument okay. if uh, put together all your thoughts. Uh, do you have any further? I do. Oh, okay. He's not finished it's, making it's his It's out thoughts. of the scope of the, the route entirely, though. Um, we, would, we, would, we would object to anything outside of the scope. This is to be based the on the document. This is to be a base, based on the appeals and the facts that have already been presented. Well, before we, before you lodge your objection, I would like to hear exactly what. If we could go. He, I'm, I'm sure he's using words of art that, to someone that, is a lawyer means something, other than a person that is not a lawyer. Uh, uh, might not, not necessarily appreciate. Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, if you have another point if you, that is entirely different from, where, from the issues that we've discussed, then we'd like to hear what that point is, and then it may be subject to objection uh, from the county. Can I follow up with just one more thing before we get there? Because he talked about a setback, which wasn't mentioned before. Um, what, what year was your building built? I believe it was 96. And what year was the new construction setback uh, required in Inglewood? You're the expert. No, you're the expert. It's your building, and the question's to you. What year was the setback required for new construction in Inglewood? I believe that it's been there for some time, but there's no dates on your uh, when the LDC was adopted from what I could see. So if anybody would like to comment on that, I'd appreciate if, it. If I could call a staff. Yes, um, Caleb McCarty again. I believe the Inglewood overlay was adopted in 2008. Um, Mr. Jones can attest to that. Um, and those setbacks being referred to are for new construction. It, was, it wasn't referring specifically to Inglewood Overlay. It was for Pace Boulevard and Corridor, if I remember correctly. I don't have it in front of me right now, but. Um, if we could, I could actually call Horace, and he can clear this up for uh, us, if you think it's relevant what he said about the setback. Frankly, I, I, I think we have gotten the gist of the argument, and the gist of the argument is although it may not be applicable to this particular building, is, is that if I understand what uh, the testimony that I've heard is that buildings are set back more for safety concerns and that's a part of the overlay or something to that effect. Frankly, I don't think it's relevant for where we're going with our uh, discussion. We've had Horace sworn in. If we could just have him speak briefly. Yes, sir. On Mr. Godwin, this is because you are, because you have perceived that idea and your, in, in your thought processes is, is, is adamant that, that says that what he stated is not true. As Caleb stated, what Caleb, that's, that's, that building has been there so old, and we do not have that. The setbacks are setbacks as defined by the LDC. So I don't want you to, to entertain that because what he's stating, that is not valid, nor is it's legitimate. So, so that is a false statement, a false assumption that he is making at that time. So if you can, don't accept that statement. Yes, fine. Well, again, I'm not sure it's relevant to what we're talking about. So, Mr. Chairman, I, if there's one more subject matter that we haven't heard, if you would like Mr. Chairman, I think it's only fair that he be allowed to present uh, a new topic. And you understand that that topic might be subject to cross-examination and also a initial objection by yes, the county. The, so the would you just give that to us? And we don't want to be chasing rabbits, and I think we've been doing that for a while here. And uh, so hopefully this helps. Um, so say we throw all that out the window, say we want to ignore everything that's happened up until this point. I've, I've comprised two ways that I can comply with, with this land development code. And it was mentioned in our previous hearing that, uh, 
that moving a main entrance or installing a new main entrance and, and having the measurement retaken, resurveyed, you know, on my own nickel, would be accepted. I brought it up to their office the next day after the last hearing, and uh, they said, no, you're not doing that. And then I, I have in the last page of my uh, of the appeals case, if we can bring up the, the very last page of the document for What I would like to do is, because it's cheaper than sticking a new door in for 10 grand, is do uh, 40 feet of sidewalk and uh, a three foot uh, nice fence around my front uh, sidewalk and patio area, closing it in to make it you know, look nicer and I can you know lock up my chairs from getting stolen. But uh, that would put me in compliance and would put me outside the, the thousand foot ordinance. And it's completely within the realms of land development codes, completely in the realms of everything. And I, I asked to apply for a permit, told me, no, you can't apply for a permit. So I tried to do that ahead of time and go ahead and get a survey done, showing that I'm in compliance now for this hearing. But they denied the permit, wouldn't let me get a permit, nothing. So. May I ask a few questions? So you, you got a survey, you had a survey done? No, I said I want to, but I don't have the sidewalk built yet. I want a permit to build a sidewalk, and then I would have a survey done to show that I'm outside the 1,000-foot uh, realm and okay. I'm comp in compliance. So you don't understand that this is a door-to-door -door measurement. Is that correct? You're, you're not getting that. Is that what that, you're not understanding? That is my front door right there. If I put a three-foot fence around my front patio and extend the sidewalk down, it now changes the route a pedestrian has to take. Unless they're hurdling <coughs> fences, they have to walk down 40 okay. feet and then go to Pace Boulevard. I, I understand that you keep wanting to talk about where the pedestrians walk. That is just part of what they are to use to understand, to, to help them in their measurement. But you do you understand the zoning requirement and the language that you don't seem to be fo focusing on is within a thousand feet of a place of worship. It's not, the, it's not that a pedestrian actually walks the thousand feet. It's whether or not the two buildings are within a thousand feet of each other. Do no, you not understand no, that? No, that is not. Okay. I that didn't is think not you, what the code says. I'm reading from the code, so I understand. No, I just want to make sure. Actually, I'll just read it for you. Read okay. it out loud, please. Section 4.3. 4-7.5 alcohol beverage sales regardless of the sale of liquor beer or wine as may be permitted by the applicable zoning district no vendor shall sell alcoholic beverages whether for on-premises or off-premises consumption within a thousand feet of a place of worship child care facility or k-12 educational facility except as may be allowed by the provisions of this section this prohibition does not apply to one APS or two APS or to ODP temporary permits as described in Florida statutes. That is 4-7.5A zoning compliance. That's the very first section. Do you understand that part? Do you understand the part where it says measurement must be taken along pedestrian rights of ways? Are you going route? to answer the question? I understand that part. It says you, it do you specifies it, yes. It specifies explicitly. Board, the, the he's route. not answering the question. He wants to question yes me as a pose. Okay, board members, any any uh, questions of either party? Like, no, sir, I don't. I, I, I did have a follow up with our with our witness regarding uh, regarding his position on putting in a new sidewalk and his act um, and his statements regarding uh, county employees being disrespectful. And I just want to clarify the record on that, if we can, please. Is that within the scope of appeal, um, Mr. Because Chairman? We can get into that. Mr. Chairman, I would like to hear the count. I think the record needs to be balanced. Yes. Please. And uh, I think we need to understand why his argument for his proposed fix is not or is, is or the county's position is that it is not, I presume, uh, acceptable. We need to hear that. Beyond that, I... I'm a little bit taken back by both the county and Mr. Demeter on uh, having been on this board like you, Mr. Chairman, for a while. I know that the county employees that do their jobs, I have always found them to be honorable people 
who try to do their best to do their duty. And I just don't see where we need to get into a, a name calling uh, 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 occasion. And uh, I would like to hear the factual reason why this doesn't work. But beyond that, I just don't think uh, that we need any. Uh, I read what was in the petitioner's, uh, his allegations and uh, their own record. So I don't think we need to, to indulge any further in that area for myself. We can keep it limited. Thank you. And, and would the county please respond to uh, Certainly. bills? So, of course, we were here with a conditional use that was withdrawn. In that time, the applicant did provide the sketch, as you see, showing some type of fence, sidewalk, and conversations with the applicant, along with myself and Mr. Jones. Per phone conversations, we discussed with the applicant the intent of this proposal. Um, I believe he was under the standing that this would possibly change our measurement. Um, technically, it would not. It's not a part of the building. It's door to door. Um, our opinion would be if you put some type of um, impeding structure or temporary structure in front of your door, then we would be dealing with that a lot. Um, we deal with a lot of these, in my experience, and um, we try to make things work. So in conversations of that day with that, nothing was denied. That's false. The applicant discontinued the phone conversation, and we haven't spoke to him till today. Um, and that was on him. Um, we, we tried to explore the intent of the proposal, um, but the applicant discontinued the conversation. Now, I asked for a permit to build that sidewalk. He said, no, I can't give you that. We're going to, you filed an appeal. I said that, that appeal's not for building could, a sidewalk. If we could, um, if the board has any further questions, um, he's not, I, I don't know that, is there, was there any discussion about issuing permits? Um, no, there was no denial nor approval for anything. Is there a process for requesting a permit? There is. And did he go through that process? He did not. Okay. So he would have to go through that process to be denied or approved. Correct. I called you up and asked for the process. No further questions. Board members, are you ready for a summary? Yes, sir. We will uh, ask the uh, staff to make uh, a closing statement. I apologize if my behavior was upsetting to anyone. Um, I, I was familiar with this case before I came in this room, and I get very defensive of our Escambia County employees. I haven't worked for the county very long, but I have found that they're the best employees I've ever encountered. So I apologize if I got excited or angered at any accusations that are made against these people that I work with. The law in this area is, the, is listed under 4-7.5, alcohol beverage sales. Under A, the zoning compliance is regardless of the sale of liquor, beer, or wine, and we read this already, and what is controlling is within 1,000 feet of a place of worship. If you go on to the measurement section, a place of worship, child care facility, or K-12 education facility, it's been well established that this is a place of worship as well as a child care facility based on testimony and documentation that's been provided to this board. The county measurement has been done three times and able to assist the individual before you, the, app, the um, appellant before you, to assist him in getting the license he desires. Three different times they went to three different doors without any information that would support his position that those doors are actually the doors of entrance. But, he, but in, an, in an attempt to accommodate him and to make this a possibility for him, they went to three different doors and conducted measurements. The objective of the, the code is from door to door. 
The distance required between the place of business selling alcoholic beverages and a place of worship, child care facility, K-12 educational facility, shall be measured along the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel within public rights of way, from the main entrance of the place of business to the main entrance of the place of worship or child care facility, or for an educational facility to the nearest point of the grounds in use as part of the facility. As has been done in this, and as has been pointed out, by our witness that it would to allow anything where he where we divert into other areas and to start this labyrinth of mazes and able to get to the thousand foot distance when there was something available to him which he withdrew which was the conditional use that was available and he withdrew from that and able to file this appeal what he has presented is not a door-to-door -door measurement. He hasn't done any measurements of his own. He hasn't pre presented any evidence that the measurement that was conducted by the county was incorrect. And that's the purpose of the appeal, is to show that the measurement or the methods they used was incorrect. As you've heard in the testimony today, the measurement has not been challenged, and the, the use, the way that it is applied has been fairly used throughout the county to all people in the county. And there is no reason to make an exception for this individual who won't even bother to go and get an accurate measurement of his own. He'd rather come in here and put in front of you items that he wants to argue about, which based on the conversations we've and the, and the things we've heard today, he has argued about with the county already. He just doesn't like the answer. He should have stayed with his conditional use, but instead he wanted to come here and argue his appeal, which is his right. However, he's presented no evidence, no expert testimony. He's presented nothing but argument by himself. And he's caused, and all he's really brought out is the fact that there's an actual church there. And the law can't change just because new evidence, it can't be ignored now that it's in front of you, that there's an actual church that practices there. But he never went on a Sunday or a Wednesday night to check that information. So it is our position that based on what the, the code says, and the information that's been provided, the only expert testimony regarding this measurement has been provided by the county, and no information has been provided by the appellant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. DeMetter, would you make your closing statement? Yeah. Um, ow. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, I mean, I, I drive by the, this conflicting property every day, eight, nine, ten times. My arcade's up until midnight, so I'm there late, and there early. I've never seen anybody there. I haven't seen anybody there until just recently since this uh, new child care facility opened. So, again, I didn't know there was a, a church being there. But, I mean, all, all the, because I'm defending myself and I'm not a lawyer, I mean, all the evidence I provided, you know, case law that got thrown out, their own land development code that they don't like, I mean, all this stuff I've, I've painted the picture of how this route is supposed to be measured and it's because you know it specifies it must be along pedestrian rights of way and so I've taken it apart piece by piece what parts are not uh, a right of way and what parts are and um, you know I've gone over uh, the best I can to where I think uh, you know there, there's a strong case here that that either the route is bad or I shouldn't be denied a permit to put in a sidewalk to get into compliance. You know, I can I can build a new main entrance and brick up the old one. I mean, there there, there are ways of conforming to laws. There are ways of complying with laws. When you get down to less than the hundred feet required from the 915 foot measurement to get to a thousand, there there's more more than one way to skin a cat. And so, them saying that they've been trying to help me get along, well, it hasn't been helpful because there are ways to to make everybody happy so you know I had to find appeal because I haven't been able to find a way to make them happy to get zoning approval for this you know I currently have a two APS license for off-premise consumption and uh, you know I just want to get a two COP license which is sells the same stuff beer and wine for on-premise consumption and my building holds like 30 people in it I'm trying to bring business to the area and I need this license to do so and uh, I believe I'm within the bounds of the law. And I hope you see that I am as well. And uh, so thank you, that's all. Thank you, sir. 
Board, the chair will now entertain a motion regarding this item. In your motion, please state whether or not you state. Uh, Board, if I may, before you entertain a motion, um, would you mind pulling up what was included as the background summary that quotes 2-6.10? I just wanted to review, since administrative appeals are a little bit different than the usual motion that's made with a conditional use or a variance, just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you could scroll down to sub four. Are there any? Wait. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So in this case, with an administrative appeal, the applicant has the burden of presenting competent substantial evidence that establishes each of the following conditions, which you'll see one, two, three, four, five. That being that the decision was arbitrary and capricious, was not in compliance with the land development code, and that the property at issue will suffer an adverse impact to a protected interest that is greater in degree than that suffered by the community at large. And if you scroll to sub five, the board's finding, if the BOA finds from the record that the applicant has presented competent substantial evidence proving the required conditions set out in the comprehensive review provisions of this section, the board shall find the appeal decision in error. The finding shall state with particularity how the decision of the administrative official was arbitrary and capricious. If the conditions are not proven, the board shall affirm the decision. So those are the two options. Okay, board, you have heard a synopsis of the options for uh, accepting the appeal or denying the appeal. Uh, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion, but I'm not sure how to correctly state it. Um, the way I'm viewing this is, and I'm putting a lot of emphasis on section 4-7.5B, the measurement, uh, I think we've, um, we figured out that the other building is and has been church, whether or not it is or is going to be a daycare facility. I'm still kind of up in the air on that one. Um, but we heard from the owner, the owner states that it's a church and it has been a church since 2020, I believe she said. Um, and I, excuse me, believe her testimony. Um, what I couldn't wrap my head around was the measurement. I believe that the measure, measurement is incorrect. And what, what, I, what I'm having problems with is this section 4-7.5 A and B. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's a C to this section or not, but um, the county kept on saying door to door. Well, it doesn't say in section B, door to door. It says, shall be measured along the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel within public rights of way. To me, that means if there's a sidewalk, a pedestrian would normally take a sidewalk to get to another sidewalk, so forth and so on. So what that measurement is, I don't know. It may still be less than a thousand feet. I have no idea. But I believe that because there is a sidewalk from the main entrance to the main entrance or, or to Pace and Bobby, um, I believe one should take that. And I believe that the county should have measured um, down that sidewalk um, and I believe that would be the accurate way to measure and to the main entrance which our understanding is the second door behind the building 
Um, so I do believe that it was measured incorrectly based on the LDC uh, statements on how to measure. I know that I've, I've been through a couple of these and the county is very specific about how they measure and um, they, I remember one in particular, um, the path was, was such that you crossed a road and then you went down another road and then you crossed back over and then you came back up. Uh, so I believe that that same form of measurement needs to be done here to be accurate across the board and I believe that uh, this was inaccurately measured. So is your motion uh, is to accept the appeal? No. Yes, my, my motion is to accept the appeal that it was inaccurately measured. That's not to say whether or not he meets the thousand foot mark. I don't know that. Um, so I just want that clarified that it was inaccurate. What my opinion is that it's, it was inaccurately measured based on the LDC's um, definition so again the two options if the boa from the record finds that the applicants presented competent substantial evidence proving the required conditions the board shall find the appeal decision in error and there are five conditions a b c d e so the finding shall state with particularity how the decision of the administrative official was arbitrary or capricious. I didn't follow the LDC. What, could you go back over that? Uh, could you scroll down the section you just read, Council? Can, could we go back to that again? Are, are you looking at sub five? Uh, Well, here's my take on it. If you read it, it says if the BOA finds from the record of the hearing that the applicant has presented competent and substantial evidence proving, proving the required conditions set out in the comprehensive review of the section, the board shall find the uh, appeal in error. Yes, and those conditions are set forth in sub four, which includes arbitrary or capricious. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, here's my problem. I don't think the applicant, while I can see some merit to your, uh, the way you've looked at this, uh, the burden is on the applicant to present competent and substantial evidence and the problem that we have here is, at least from what I've been able to gather, you, uh, you say that the, uh, the county did not mail a measure correctly. Well, the burden is on the applicant to prove by competent and substantial evidence the county didn't measure accurately, I don't think that he has done that. Well, the well problem, I, I would disagree. Point of order, point of order. Oh. I would disagree because his whole, his whole argument has been rights of way and pedestrian traffic and sidewalks and so forth and so on, which is why what led me to re-review the LDC and and the actual language because the county attorney kept on saying door to door, door to door, door to door. And that's what I thought it was, door to door, but it's not. It is actually building the building. Well, no, it's uh, using pedestrian, uh, it's in here somewhere. The quickest way to travel. Right, using 
the, the using pedestrian. Book. It's the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel within public rights of way pedestrian from travel. the main entrance of the place of business to the main entrance of the place of worship or child care facility. And by his discussion of um, the sidewalk and the parking lot and so forth and so on. Well, all what I gathered out of it was he's just saying it ain't right. That's not the same thing as showing by competent and substantial evidence this is why it's wrong. And while uh, I, I will have to say I went back in just a minute, minute ago and looked at map number three, the one that's the straight line up uh, pace. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to my mind, uh, that is uh, a, a um, uh, that is pretty convincing evidence that the county did do the right thing. And I don't think he has a problem with that. Uh, but that's not, in other words, and I I guess it's maybe a fine point, but I in this case I think it you know turns the whole question turns on it. The burden isn't on the county. The burden is on the applicant. The applicant says, well, it's not right. That may be here nor there, but he has to show why it's not right. And the applicant did not show that. Uh, and therefore, uh, and I certainly can respect your opinion that and uh, I, I can't go along with you, but I can understand where you are about uh, the route. But the applicant just said it's not right. That's not the same thing as, in my mind as competent and substantial evidence that if he had a survey, uh, which as I recall from the meeting your original meeting was the suggestion to do. If he had taken a survey, gotten a sealed survey and brought it in and said, look, here it is, my, I've got the surveyor, he's licensed, he did this for me and it shows that, you know, the county, uh, this is the correct route, uh, then, then I'd be with you. But he didn't do that. The only competent and substantial evidence, aside from his disputing the results of it, is what the county's presented. So it can't, it can't, by definition, uh, he can't prevail. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I think that his arguments uh, were valid in understanding the root of, uh, of the measurement. Um, I think that if a surveyor gave me a survey, well, that's the surveyor's opinion of the root. And but he's not, the surveyor is... Right, exactly. You're exactly right. He's not. And uh, a survey it would be confident and substantial evidence. Again, of what? Of, of that there's another of, route? Of what his route would be and that it would uh, not, uh, that he would be qualified under that particular route. All I think, I don't think we're, we're deciding whether or not he's qualified or not. I think we're deciding whether or not the route is incorrect. I, exactly. And, and the surveyor is not going to be able to determine whether the route well, is. Well, it would be evidence of, of what a professional would put forward as his, his professional opinion. I'll be honest with you. I got lost in this rabbit hole mm -hmm. from both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I didn't think it was helpful uh, at all. Uh, 
looking at uh, uh, this back and forth about uh, right of ways and all the, you know, the, the issues that were, uh, anyway, it just fogged up, in my opinion, the arguments for both sides. I don't think it did each other, either side, any good. But that's nearly here nor there. All I'm saying is, and I'll be quiet, is, is that the burden is on the applicant. The applicant, in my mind, has not produced competent and substantial evidence proving that the county was uh, in error. Well, all we have is his assertions, bare assertions, that it's not right. And to my mind, that's just not enough to carry the day. And with that, I won't filibuster anymore, I promise. Did you want to make a, a comment? <laughs> um, not much more can be said. I think we've heard yeah. plenty. Um, I see this really as a relatively simple um, um, thing to consider. I have not, I'm not convinced um, that the county um, measurements uh, were in, inaccurate, in, incomplete, or um, um, performed improperly. Again, um, the burden of proof is, is on the applicant, and I have not heard him say, tell me in any way that uh, the county uh, didn't do their job. Um, I agree with her on, I think it was this, uh, measured wrong, but like I said, he hasn't said if it goes his way, is it going to make the difference? That's the problem I've got right now. So, um, I don't think the, if it would have been introduced that it could have done, I think it would have been better, but right now it's still the county. He hasn't proven it. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, uh, did, did you want to make a motion? We, we have a motion pending. If you do, we need you to word it. <laughs> and there may be more than one motion, I've got a feeling, but. Right. I make a motion to uh, um, uh, to agree with the uh, appellant um, that the measurement was incorrectly measured. I believe that um, let's see. I believe that um, the applicant uh, presented uh, substantial evidence um, Proving that they did not, that the county did not use the uh, uh, ordinary pedestrian travel um, within public right of ways, um, and therefore I think that it needs to be remeasured correctly. I don't think that this has anything to do with whether or not it meets the thousand feet. It has to do with whether or not it was measured correctly. Um, okay, and we, so that's my motion. We, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion fails. Do we have another motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we uh, approve the finding of the administrative officer and deny this appeal. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Three, two, passes. Appeal is denied. See you on court.
I appreciate you trying to help. I had kept the condition. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we got anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Rachel had something. Just a reminder that Wednesday we have our regular Board of Adjustment meeting. We have two conditional cases that would be heard. Um, can I assume? Yes. Can I assume all five of you will be here on Wednesday? Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, February 15th will be the February. Okay, I'll put you down. Thank you. I think his uh,